Oh, Devi, when will you teach me how to play the kachapi, a kind of vina, in a kunja that is filled with humming bees on the shore of your lake? In this verse, a vision is described of Swamini teaching the Veena. O oh Devi, when will you teach me how to play the Veena in a kunja on the bank of your kunda? Just like Rasika poetry, Veena playing is also required while serving the divine couple. Tulasi thinks, I want to become expert in anything connected with devotion service. It is also Swamini's desire. Let my Kinkari become expert in her service. To the lotus feet of such a merciful mistress, my Shri Guru Dev has submitted me. He has shown me that the greatest thing in life is Swamini's service and Swamini's maid servanthood. Um. So maybe we can stop here and to try to enter deeper in this scene, very intimate scene, where Radhika personally is teaching Tulasi how to play this beautiful instrument. Bina, one kind of Bina. And Baba is giving very nice hints in his commentaries, explaining that this is desire of Radhika to teach her maid servant. Because Radhika also knows desire of Kinkari, and Kinkari is hankering, is very greedy to learn this expert playing of Veena for the sake of service. So this is loving exchange between Radhika and his kinkari, her kinkari, sorry. Kinkari knows the heart of Radhika perfectly. All the secrets from Radhika's heart are very clearly known to Tulasi but also because of intense love and connection, Radhika knows the deep secrets in the heart of Kinkari. That Tulsi wants to learn most confidential songs, most confidential poetry, 
and most confidential way of playing the music. All these arts are meant to make love between Radhika and Krishna more intense, more relishable. So it's not the question of playing instruments and not the it's not the question to become expert in playing instruments the point the essence of playing instruments is to play with proper bow which is required in particular moments when Radha and Mohan are exchanging their love. All Sakis, they are expert in playing different kinds of instruments. But this particular playing which Manjari is playing is very, very relishable for Radhika and Mohan in their intimate, intimate pastimes in the Kunja, when the Sakis are not allowed even to come, and what to say about playing for them. So it is clear from the words of our beloved Acharyas, how this relationship with, with Manjari and Kinkari is so close because they are inseparable. They are one in the heart. Not in an impersonal way that they are one, but they are one in the same feelings. Only someone who is, feels oneness in the feelings can properly understand Bhava of Radharani and properly serve Radhika with perfect ingredients of that service. And we can see here that music <clears throat> is one kind of paraphernalia for worshipping Radhika Smohan and their love. Music is paraphernalia, dancing is paraphernalia, singing is paraphernalia, poetry is paraphernalia. It's not just incense, chamar, ghee lamp, and so on. No, everything is paraphernalia if it's used with full pure love, then it becomes paraphernalia. So Tulasi is begging here, Swamini, please mold me, model me, model me according to your desire. Because the only in that way I can learn this expert, artful, playing of Veena and give you and your Mohan pleasure. This is the essence of my existence, Tulsi is thinking. Radhe, you have your essence of your existence is to give your lover pleasure. But the essence of my existence is to give you pleasure and to both of you. This is the essence of my life. This is the essence of my existence. So please teach me. And we can see here how music is important in this loving seva of yoga like Kishore. Music 
is coming through the ears and comes in the heart. And from the heart, it goes from in the mouth or through the fingers. Fingers, which are playing the music, are, are instruments of the feelings Radhi, Radhi. of the heart. Radhi, yes. Radhi, Garanga. Yes. Uh, yes. We don't hear you right. The voice is uh, interrupted. Does, how is the, uh, does the other one hear him clearly? I hear very clearly. Uh, I think that the only problem is uh, in Vrindavan. Okay, then we check it here. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. I don't know, Gurudev, if he hearing or no. You are hearing? Okay, thank you. Radhe, Radhe, Mataji. Thank you. So we can hear the music is giving very strong impressions. In material world, music is giving very strong impressions. And specific kind of music is for specific situations. But here also we can see how the music is important to nourish exchange of love between Radha and Mukhan. And Manjari, who is feeling this in the heart, she is expert and using her fingers, her voice, like an instrument, like a paraphernalia, to express these feelings and to help Yugala, Piriti, their love. That their love burn more like a fire and sometimes to cool down this fire and again to burn the flames higher and then again to make a lower calmer so this is the play of love play of heart But Manjari is learning it. But the mercy of other Manjaris, Guru Manjaris, and then she comes in the situation when Radhika wants to teach her. Baba is giving here resume, please. Do you want to? Uh, my Guru, the lotus feet, to the lotus feet of such merciful mistress. To the lotus feet of such a merciful mistress, my Guru Dev has submitted me. Yes, he, he has it, shown. He put it the seed. And in that seed is all the tree which is necessary for Manjari Bob. And not only tree, the fruits are also on that tree. He put it this seed. And in that way, he introduced me to Swami. Because also it was the desire of Swami. <laughs> He was inspired to catch this fallen soul and put, even forcefully, to put in the heart this seed of devotional service. But not every seed I want. I want seed for Manjarba and Tulasi. Or Raghunath here is an example of someone who received the mercy from Goranga for Manjari Bhav. He had so much association of Swarup Damodar 
Ramananda Roy, and others. But he receives from Goranga the seed, the beej of Manjari Bhav. He received it because he wanted that. And now we are tasting, we are relishing the fruits of this wonderful tree of his devotional service in Manjari Ma. And how he is expressing, he is expressing through his songs. Each word is actually his singing, songs, Poetry, but also melody is behind that. And devotees should be very sensitive to hear these melodies. And devotees who are expert and full of Manjari Bhava are singing the Sanskrit words. Maybe they can open more a little bit. But it's not the point of Sanskrit. We should feel and receive this mercy which is present in these words. Oh Devi, when will you teach me how to play Vina? And because Radhika already taught him how to play Vina, his words are sounding like a music. And devotees are able to relish through their ears and their hearts are melting. So this is our sadhana. This is the best sadhana. Shravana and Kirtana and then Bhajana. Because my Gurudev submitted me He showed me that the grace to think in life in Swamini's service, greatest thing. And how he showed me? Because he was also singing in my ears what is the melodies which Swamini and her Gurudeva, Gurudevi, taught him. He was singing, he was playing the same Veena, and somehow, although we are, I'm so foolish, some drops are penetrating. So this is very encouraging words and commentary, which is clearly shows how we should prepare our heart to receive this music, this Gita, Manjar Gita. Someone wants to say something, please. And Baba now is going in another mood. For us, Sadakas, please, Rasami, if doesn't. Anyone doesn't want to add something, what should do? How I am wasting my life. If I am callous and indifferent towards the lotus feet of such a mistress who personally teaches her maid servant how to serve her. Even now, 
I could not recognize myself as Radha's Dasi, but I remain immersed in false, temporary, bodily consciousness and its expansion. I could still not take Shiradika's lotus feet in my heart or to my chest to massage them. A practicing devotee becomes ashamed when he realizes his own unfortunate condition after hearing and chanting about the activities and the teachings of the Acharyas. Goswami. This is natural feeling which appears when someone with full feelings are going deep in the words of Acharyas. Humility appears. And Baba is saying, this is the sign. When devotee feel ashamed, this is positive, this is not negative feeling, this is very requirable feeling. At least I understand that. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Because their words are so sublime, so sweet, full of prema, that natural feeling, reaction of devotee is to be ashamed. And this makes him humble. So this is the art, also art, of listening the music of devotees. Not because he is better than me and then I feel ashamed. No. Because this is competitive competition mood, full of false ego. No, I feel ashamed because I received everything and I'm so stupid that I cannot fool. advancing. Man. I'm so slow. And this is the sign that devotee is not indifferent. Baba is saying, how I'm wasting my life if I'm indifferent towards the lotus feet of such a mistress. Indifference. We say, uh, indifference is I'm not interesting for this subject so much. Indifference is completely opposite of the greed. When devotee has a greed, burning desire, then there is no question of indifference. But if we are listening, this kata with indifference, then there is that it will be not relishing, drinking with the ears. And this music will not come down in my in our heart. So I remember Bhakti No Thakur was talking about enthusiasm, utsaha, like one of the most important instructions of Rupa Goswami. To be utsaha, to be enthusiastic, it means to be greedy. And this feeling of indifference is completely opposite of that. When indifference appears in the heart of devotee, then apathy is coming, laziness is coming. 
a lack of service mood is coming. And the cure for this is to be in the close association for those who are always enthusiastic. And this indifference, I'm sorry that I'm putting so much stress in this, is a result of Paul's identification. I am this body, I am this mind, I am this ego. I am very tired of listening of all of this. I cannot do any more. This is indifference. So, Baba is giving here the hints and each devotee has to think, to feel and to receive these instructions because this is also instructions. Because in that way, I'm losing such a great opportunity to put Radhika's lot of feet on my chest. To put Radhika's lot of feet in my palms, in my hands. And my Guru Dev gave me this opportunity. And how I can put this Radhika's chest, uh, feet on my chest? By listening the music in the form of words from her maidservants. Gurudev, please help this foolish disciple. Uh, explaining what is beautiful you share. I'm too much rubbish in your words. Thank you. Jainandaji, please help your fallen brother. It's okay? It's okay? <laughs> you know, yes, we hear you. So, so beautiful. You know, I also raising actually. And uh, so this is Baba, who is real Vaishnava. And real Vaishnava symptom is that is uh, Gorang, you know, Gorangaji say, I am not a tall Vaishnava. Someone who has prema, that symptom is no, I don't have any tinge of prema. It's completely opposite thing. This is really amazing. And uh, if someone who has prema, its symptom is very humble, also very much appreciating other devotees and the swaminis, but also feel so insignificant myself. This is a present to another P-Bus. This morning, Guru Dev was sharing. I'm not Guru. I still student of my Guru Dev. So this is actually real position of Guru. Some devotee is sharing. So yeah, if we think I'm Guru, then adva our advancement may stop it. But if we become humble, like Gurudev, we can, we can run every moment. So this is a very beautiful symptom of, of devotees. Then we could run. What is humility? 
if we go close with Guru Dev or someone who is very humble, we could understand who, what is humility. We may read the book, <laughs> but sometimes or many times we don't understand humility. Just to, also Guru Dev today saying, saying, especially, you know, we, are, we have tendency to think by mind. But actually, we should feel from heart. I'm telling for myself, you know, because my mind say, oh, I have to do this. I should do this. If I do, do, don't do this, some problem is coming. Like kind of a little negative mentality, which Goranga just say, indifferent. But from heart, This kind of eagerness comes from, from heart. Then we can do some, some seva, very positive seva. Guru Dev recently also telling us, negative is like minus, and positive is plus. So two plus two is four, but two minus two equals zero. This is minus. And Guru Dev said, but if to put the parallel, I can, I can follow you. I can, I can, what do you say? Uh, I can go with you, cooperate with you. Then two, two means 22. That's Guru Dev saying, wow. This is spiritual life. And two plus two is religious life. Two minus two is like a material negative life. So just to, I just, to, you mentioned indifference. Sometimes we think too much mind. We forget feeling. Especially by the bhakti, we may can, we can do by mind. But Raganuga bhakti, by mind, we cannot do this. From heart, we can do this. Also, this learning, sorry, I did, did not say from beginning. This is Raghunath Das was Swamini actually teaching this Kachapi Bina in Radha Kunda. So previously, we have read in Govardhan, here, secretly, Radhika and Torashi Manjari went in the cave. And Swamini teach Bina. So there is different kind of Bina. Sometimes say Mahati Bina. And sometimes say Labhava Bina. And this is, so Gorangaji explained very nicely because this not, this not for kind of just only for music or just for expertness. Actually for Seba. Because sometimes Mohan faint. Sometimes Radhika faint. If Mohan faint, Swamini sometimes cannot do. At that time, manjari necessary. At that, because Swamini cannot say own loving, you know, past time. He cannot, she cannot say. But manjari could say. Third person can say. So therefore, always manjari needed for Swamini. And also Swamini is moha. So this is a different uh, occasion. But the similarity is there because Swamini is teaching different kind of uh, bina and for the service of uh, Torasi. This is also very beautiful. So thank you very much. <coughs> thank you, Jai Mataji.
Thank you very much. Liladatta Goswami, who became intoxicated by drinking the honey that trickles from Sri Chaitanya's lotus feet and thus gave up his wife that was as beautiful as an angel and his wealth that equaled equals that of Indra, the king of heaven, as if they were told to become poorer than a beggar, wrote in his book, Muktra Charitra. I worship the full moon that rose in the sky of Mother Sachi's womb to brighten up the world with the nectar of his own devotion. What kind of people of this age are we? Sriman Mahaprabhu showed us the path of bhajan, of taste, of constant attraction, the path of natural possessiveness, experience of rasa, love, and the pinnacle of bliss. This is not the path of fear, reverence, or obstacles. One more time. Shima Mahaprabhu showed us the path of bhajan, of taste, of constant attraction, the path of natural possessiveness, experience of rasa, love, and the pinnacle of bliss. This is not the path of fear reverence or obstacles. So this is two different paths, two different kind of sadhanas. Sadhana, practicing, and when we say practicing, it, we mean living. Not only practicing, but living. And the choice is, would we choose the path of fear, reverence, formality, what Baba is saying, Lance, or we want to choose the path of love, pinnacle of bliss, relishing rasa, natural possessiveness. You are mine and I am yours. Like the path of Raga Bhakti. And by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, Undescribable myths. This part of bhajan is introduced and influ infused so we can say here that one part is part of archan what devotee is doing with the body mind and intelligence but the other type of worshipping is with his eternal spiritual identity. Outside worshipping 
is one thing, but when possessiveness appears in the heart, I am your dasi, and you are my swamini, then bhajan starts to flow. And this moment, I am your maidservant, is something which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave to this world, brought to this world. To understand who is Radhika and how to become her maidservants. This is the greatest gift of all avatars which are appearing in each yuga. Different kinds of yuga. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like Goranga, appears in this Kali Yuga to this, to give this blissful path of bhajan, full of taste, relishing, constant attraction, Baba is saying, constant attraction. Experience of rasa and love. So there is no question of indifference. By worshipping with body, mind, intelligence and physical senses, it's normal that indifference appears in the person. Because this is the body. Some it becomes tired more and less, satiated, mind becomes satiated. But spiritual identity, spiritual body, bhavadeh, is naturally full of dynamic enthusiasm. Like we see the children, they are very dynamic, full of enthusiasm to always play, never eat, never sleep. They have to be forced to do that. So in the similar way, someone who has awakened Bhava Deha Swarup, he doesn't also want to eat and to sleep because he also wants to be deeply absorbed in the bhajan. So sometimes devotees are asking, how is it possible that this and that, especially Raghunath and other acharyas, they slept just one hour, they ate every second, third day. Yeah, it is possible because they was completely identified. They didn't do austerities for that. They, it's just outside the sign of their deep love. They didn't want to cut the Baja, Lila Smara, with such ordinary things of sleeping and eating. But I'm completely crazy when my belly is not full here. I'm out of mind when I didn't sleep eight, ten hours. So this is my indifference. Because there is no greed in my heart. And my baladeha is not so strong. And I need the mercy for that. I need the strength, spiritual strength. It's enough physical strength. I'm not interested for physical strength. But spiritual strength, bala. I need the bala. Spiritual strength for my bhajan. This is what I'm begging. And Baba is trying to teach me. My Gurudev is also trying to teach me. Use opportunity which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave to you, my dear. Don't misuse this chance. Who knows? Who knows when we appear again?
Did I, did I, did I? <clears throat> and, yes. Um, in this verse is said that this is not the path of fear, of reverence and obstacles. If you can give some light on this, this is not path of obstacles. Gurudev, please. Gurudev says he's listening. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Jayanandaji, please. Uh, you hear me, or? Yeah. Uh, so, so, question is: could, could you say again? So, please, is 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 not a matter of fear and awe and reverence? Yeah, this is and obstacles and obstacles. Yes. Mm. So, actually, Goranga is more explained nicely. But I like uh, by the pass is we can say externally. You know, sometimes we can do, by the bhakti means we recognize Krishna as God or Supreme Lord. Then naturally, all when reverence is coming. So sometimes offense is coming. You know, we should not do this. We should do this. This is by the bhakti and all when reverence. But Raga Bhakti, Gurudev used to say, from mind, Raga Bhakti coming from mind to heart. So heart, from heart coming. This is, we need greed. So if we have greed, then we forget Krishna Supreme Personality Godhead. Or even Krishna won't forget to taste love. I'm not, good to say, I'm not Supreme Lord. I'm just a coward boy. I'm just a gardener. I'm just, you know, watch, watchman, gardener. Someone who unqualified person come, I check it. Very humble mood. Why is that? Because love can taste equally, or more humble position. Even Krishna want to, Krishna become bigger for love. So therefore, <laughs> love is more greater than God. Because God itself is love. <laughs> yes, God. That's God. a mystical situation, isn't it? Yes. So God, actually, God is supposed to have everything. Because he create everything. But he cannot create one thing. This is love. That's why he created relation. Yes. So therefore, need relationship. Mm -hmm. And if we have a strong relationship, then we forget all and reverence. And obstacle also, we don't think so much because devotee real devotee is para dukkha dukkhi as a as a devotee is suffering i feel my suffering i want to help you yes, I am. so this is a real devotee and very humble and very tolerant and very lovely so this is Actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us, this is Unna Tojwar Rasa. Because, interesting, we say Manjari Baba is highest, or Unna Tojwar Rasa, or Baba Rasa is highest. True. But why is that? Because maid servant is actually lowest position. Because taking care of, you know, Swamini, or sometimes taking care of Saki sometimes. And they, they do anything, clean the toilet, you know, washing, cleaning, everything do manual service. 
But love, love can taste lowest positions person. This is a mystery of bhakti, mystery of service. Actually, love flow from higher to lowest. So therefore, lowest person can taste love. So therefore, if we want to taste, we, we must forget all and reverence. We have to forget our, you know, I'm high. You know, we have to forget. And that position, Mahababu say, go people to Padakamara yo, das, das, and dasa. So actually, we are dasi and dasi of dasi. Mm -hmm. That's the balance, that's the beauty. And also Krishna also says, someone who says, I'm servant of God is not my devotee. Someone says, I'm servant of servant of my devotee. That is real servant. So that, that is Manjari. That is Mahaprabhu given to us. And no other age. Because Mahaprabhu came once a Brahma day, you know, one, one day of Brahma, thousand yuga is coming, Dibya yuga is thousand times coming. And at that time, just one period, <laughs> even Prabhupada say, 10,000 year, this Mahaprabhu's golden time is 10,000 year. So this is amazing time we are born. But we can see also in Vrindavan, you know, in that place. It's amazing in the few years, three, four years, so many thousand, thousand people coming. So Satya Yuga, it already start when Prabhupada came to America. And now we can see the explosion of this uh, atomic bomb of his lecture at Jews. <laughs> All the love that Srila Prabhupada gave in the books, now is exploding. I was coming from Delhi. I never see so much traffic to come to Vrindavan. Why? Let's make it a why. For that. Here, the land of love is not the land of the money. In fact, Lakshmi doesn't enter here. They pray Lakshmi. Stay away. Yeah. But it is the land of super love. No love, super. Mm, yeah, true. Utam, utam. But also, but Mahaprabhu gave us this unna to jawarasa. But to, to, to want to this one, mm -hmm. or really practice one, is not so many, very rare. Mm -hmm. Sometimes say, or even Paramaguru say, to find Rashka Vaishnava is not so easy. Mm -hmm. So, we found out Gurudev, this is so rare. I feel it because I saw many sadhu, even in Brindava. But not so easy, especially someone who speak English or someone who accept foreigner disciple. It's extremely rare. But also, this Baba say, I'm so unfortunate. Gurudev given me the Rota Sweet of Mahaprabhu or Rota Sweet Swamini or do bhajan. But unfortunately, I cannot, you know, I cannot practice fully or I cannot taste anything. I'm so full. Because of my false ego, because of my, my, my material desire. But we have to accept. But this Baba is saying is, is not true. Gurudev is saying is not true. They are, they are showing us example. So this is, uh, I think we have to learn it. So thank you very much. Radhe, Radhe. Could, could I uh, try a, a simple summary Please. of these uh, very rich answers? Um, there are no uh, 
they are needed there, there there are no um, internal obstacles an obstacle is an external material phenomenon whose spiritual meaning we have not yet realized wow that's an obstacle wow i hope that helps This is the I'll... reason why. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, please, Maya. Please, Maya. I just got uh, uh, enthusiastic to hear all of you. Please go ahead. This is the reason why Udavaji is saying. This is the reason why Narottam Das Thakur is praying to Rupa Ragunata. In this song, Rupa Ragunata Hoi Beatuki. The last two verses. He is praying, please give me mercy to understand your teachings, to understand your books. Because, but not only to understand with the mind and intelligence, with heart. When I really, and this means with heart, when I really understand your teachings, then I will be able to properly practice. If I don't understand how to drive the bicycle, how I will do it? If I don't know even what is a bicycle. So he is praying in two verses, not only one. The last two verses, he is praying, please give me mercy to understand your teachings. So it means something. It means that we need the mercy. It's not just for granted. We need the mercy to go deeper. This is understand. But you have, we have to conquest the, the mercy, my dear. It, it, it comes uh, by agreed and desire. So you have to conquest it. Yes. How? With your behavior, with your intelligence, and with your loving connection. Yes. Otherwise, we talk about mercy as an ideal. I don't know if you agree or not. But it's like that for my personal reality. Sorry, for my personal realization, it works like this. Right? So thank you very much. So I want to share what Guru Dev said recently. Mm -hmm. Guru Dev, I was shocked and very amazing. And also, this Uttabaji helped me so much. Actually, but you know, spiritual world is divine. But also material world also divine. And then Uttabaja helped me very much for me, you know, for my understanding. Because we are thinking, you know, this is obstacle, this person is a bad person, this is bad, this is good. So we are still we are thinking like this. <laughs> kind of material vision. And Guru Dev said to us, actually from beginning. We are discriminating. This is material and this is spiritual. But if we advance, we don't discriminate. Everything is spiritual means my understanding is like this. Everything we can see love perspective. We can see whenever love is there, Radha Shakti is there. The mercy of Radharan is there. So if we could accept whatever happening to us, it seems obstacle, but actually this is the mercy of Sri Radhika. Actually, it's kind of transformation by love. So if we think everything, you know, loving perspective or Radha Shakti's perspective, and then we can see everything positive. But we have a tendency to accept, oh, this is negative, oh, this is not good. This is I'm learning from Uddhavaji and uh, from Gurudev. This is really amazing, you know, this is Paramahansa vision. Even material world also divine. If we think, you know, if think, and then we be, we could beyond this duality, good and bad. I I like I don't like. <laughs> this is obstacle. This is not obstacle. 
everything mercy of our Swamini. Everything, if we could humble, if we are humble, we could accept. So sorry, this is, I put a little bit good devs and my, you know, humble explanation. Rade, rade. Rade, rade. Thank you. Gopika, you want to say? Thank you, my dear. I like very much this question um, that we chew on this. Why, why it says our path is not a path of obstacle. It's so nice <laughs> to meditate. Because actually, our Swamini, she's every day facing so many obstacles. So actually, our path is full of obstacles. <laughs> every day, every day, is, she's practicing how to walk on the muddy path in the middle of the night and how to walk on the thorns and how to slip and fall and how to meet with her in-laws and how to, you know, hide from the elders. From morning to night, we are only in obstacles. <laughs> so why saying that we are not on the path of obstacles is not true. <laughs> and then I, I'm so grateful to all of my elder brothers, Jananda Maharaj, Udhavaji, Guru Sundar, because we are show, it's showing one is internal in our bhajan is always, we have to help Swamini with all these obstacles. And then externally, Gurudev is showing us any challenge which comes is for growth, to go more deep in that. And this is what we were sharing now, Jananda Maharaj was saying about humility, so that is my humbleness that when what seems to be an obstacle comes my way, I go inside to, to see the other vision. Why is Gurudev, you know, why is this coming to me right now? It's so that I will go more deep in my bhajan, so that I will grow more, more, more love in my life. So means in our path, obstacle is not actually an obstacle. Obstacle is also mercy. That's why we are not have any obstacle. That's the conclusion, <laughs> my conclusion from all your beautiful sharing. Thank you. Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you very much. And Baba is giving this word, obstacles. The last one, he said, oh, I'm trying to find fear. First is fear. Reverence automatically is coming and obstacles, because this is the path of Dharma. And Dharma is something which is practicing with the body. And why we are so attached to Dharma? Because we were listening the music of Dharma so many lifetimes. The songs of Dharma, poetry of Dharma, but now, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his representatives, we are able to listen real, relishing mood of music, which brings devotee to overcome these obstacles, and like Gopika said, and to use these obstacles for increasing the loving exchange between Radhika and Mohan. Yes, I agree, Gopika. The life of Radhika is full of obstacles, but she is showing also how to overcome with passionate love, not indifference. Passionate love. We need passionate love. And like Jayanandaji said, humility. When real passionate love disappears, humility is including in that. Then, overcoming of obstacles, using obstacles also, how to use the obstacles. Radhika is teaching how to use these obstacles to increase her love. Or, like Gopika said, our budget. 
in our subject knowledge. So these obstacles are the path of Dharma, not the part of Raga Bhakti. But to enter in Raga Bhakti, we need the time. In the beginning of practicing of Raga Bhakti, still devotees practicing with the body, mind, and senses. And when Swarup fully develops, then he is fully situated in this Raga Patera part. But the practice is important. And association, of course, with those sweet persons who are already attained this perfection. I don't know if Danny DG is satisfied. With answers of so many devotees and support of Gurudev. <laughs> so, 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 I don't know the player. It is very encouraging, encouraging very much this this word. There is no obstacles. So it means that uh, if we have genuine desire and greed, until we have greed, we are safe, balancing the greed and humility in the same time. So, so thank you so much to all of you. Radhe, Radhe. Uh, yes, please. Yes, sorry, I, I feel so unqualified to speak, but there, there is this question that arises in my heart and I cannot hold myself, so sorry for interrupting. Um, working out from what Gurudev was saying so beautifully um, about that the material is also spiritual, it's so radical for my mind that I'm just, in addition to what has been said, I'm just wondering... Isn't it also a matter of choice when we are in our everyday life, we meet so many obstacles in form of negative feelings, but also in form of practical experiences to apply to apply Radhika in those moments to, like as far as I understand, to it's a matter of choice to either take it as a negative experience or see it as an obstacle, or to see it as a way of going even deeper and to take a conscious choice to approach both our feelings and in our practical life. That this is this is representing for me because it's a it's a manifestation also of myself, my mm, my heart, my psyche. So all the beautiful I see is a reflection of that, but also all the obstacles I see is also a reflection of that. Rade, rade. Udavaji, you want to add something? Uh, Excuse me, what is your name, Didi? Mira, Mira Didi. Radhe, Radhe. Oh, yeah, sorry, Mira. Oh, I, I know you. Yes, yes. Thank you. I know. Yeah, you have nice family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Radhe. Please, Udavaj. Um, Radhe, Radhe. Well, it's a terribly difficult question about life and and courage in living life when we don't <clears throat> see the meaning of what we're doing. Sorry, power just went off up here, but I'm still here. Um, the one answer that's important is that it's not just a choice. No. Our ability to understand the meaning, the spiritual meaning of our lives in the in this external reality, in the material world, uh, is, is the 
is a question of, of experience, of spiritual growth, of spiritual maturity, of, of past uh, life, of past samskara. So we're all working with a certain set of skills and a certain ability to understand the spiritual sense of our surroundings. To to take the words that I'm really grateful for Jainanda for using, to see um, the face of Radharani in, in the material world, slipping and sliding as Kupikan reminded us and tripping on the thorns and if we see her in these obstacles, then we know we have a different sense, they have a different sense than if we see nothing, if we see only pure suffering, material suffering. If we see the emotion that they generate, if we see the, the, the maturity and feeling that they bring us, then, then we can confront them in a different way, have different level of courage. But how we confront them depends on where we are in our spiritual evolution. A great soul like our dear Gurudev sees only spiritual meaning in everything. In the bedpost beside you, the bed there is where he's sitting. In the cup of coffee, in your eyes, in your body, he sees spiritual meaning everywhere. He sees it out there on his face in everything. So this is where, this is the place we are going, we hope. <laughs> but most of us are not able to see that. And so we see what we can. And when we don't see it, then we struggle with it in a material way. It's not just choice. It's part of where we are spiritually. But the, the faith to have is that there's nothing in this world which is not caused by the loving energy of Radharani, and at some stage in our evolution, we'll see that. And until we see it, then we're called upon to have faith and watch examples like our Gurudev and others. Beautiful. That was very beautiful. So I feel, of you know, I also agree his opinion because if our mind, no, our eyes open it, Oma Gyana Timirandasha, Gyana Jana Sharakai, Chakshuru Milita Mena, Tasmai Shuri Gurabena. I feel we also, we, we at this challenge, also we need mercy of Sadhguru Vaishnava. And also Radha Moha. You know, I think it is, it takes, you know, sometimes for me, it takes, you know, many, many, many years. Still I'm, <laughs> still I'm, you know, I'm blind. So I think this is, this is real mercy. If we got mercy from Gurudev, then our eye, we could see. Radha Rani everywhere. Like I feel like you know Uddhava, he's getting so much mercy from Gurudev. And uh, he could see very, very bright vision, very positive vision. So we also we can we can be also like this by the mercy of Gurudev and uh, Uddhava. That's my feeling. This we need mercy. This is my point. Mm -mm. Oh. More. Without experiencing transcendental Bhagavata Rasa, one naturally starts to engage in worldly activities and attachment oh. and attachment and constant attraction to Radha Krishna will not 
arise. This natural experience of rasa is infused in the worship revealed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Although the Vraja Gopika naturally bathed in the powerful flood of attachment to Krishna, all the obstacles on their way to meeting him made their attachment to him even more powerful and infused that natural love for Krishna in them. <laughs> and Sri Mahaprabhu has brought the worship in the mood of the manjaris, the maid servants who have taken shelter of the lotus feet of Shirad, who is herself the crown jewel of all these gopikas. All rasa and bhav is assembled to the fullest extent and in all respects in the style of bhajan that Mahaprabhu has brought to us. If I don't understand this now, then when will I? So this is the answer on the questions. <laughs> In few sentences, Baba is giving answer, he is giving the process, and he is showing the path, and it's very, very clear. But, like Udavaji said, we need certain kind of consciousness. So, what is upon us, is to bring this consciousness on a more mature level. By following the words of Acharyas, following their living examples, then the consciousness will become more mature, more mature, more mature, and then we will understand that obstacles in material world, there are not different from the obstacles in spiritual world because they only enhance natural love of devotee. If I don't understand this now, in this lifetime, then when will I? And we need more intense association of devotees. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. I, uh, in my mind or in my heart came this feeling that Manjari is helping Swamini and Mohan to meet each other and to overcome the optical, opticals. And so we are trained, we have to practice this in our material life here to overcome optical obstacles obstacle. obstacles maybe to practice here for our swarup for our seva was for Radha Mohan and not to see this as an optical obstacle oh sorry for my English I'm sorry <laughs> So to, to learn to handle this and to be fast and quick and still in love when things come so that we know how to do this when we are with Swamini together.
in a kunja filled with humming bees on the bank of Radha Kund. Tulasi learns playing Veena from Swami. This lake, Radha Kunda, delights Tulasi so much because it belongs to her Swami. There are so many divine playgrounds in Raja, but Raghunath has chosen the bank of Swamini Skunda as his greatest and only shelter. In a kunja filled with humming bees on this bank, he will learn to play Veena so that he will be able to render devotional service to the divine couple. When you commence the Rasa Dan with Hari... Somebody, please repeat because it was interruption in your internet connection. Okay. Sorry. Radhe. In a kunja filled with humming bees on this bank, she will learn to play Veena so that she will be able to render devotional service to the divine couple. When you commence the Rasa dance with Mohana, I will play the Veena according to your teachings so that I can arouse your Rasa desires. In Madana Sukhada Kunja, Swamini sits down and takes a veena in her hand, showing Tulasi how to hold it and how to play the strings with the fingers of her left hand. Tulasi attentively watches Swamini while sitting at her feet. Meanwhile, a parrot tells to Shamsunda, Shri Shwari is teaching Tulasi how to play the Kachapi Vina at Madana Sukhada Kunja. So he goes there and sees how Swamini is absorbed in twanging the strings of the veena while bees are sweetly buzzing around. Mohana is enchanted by this sight as he stands by the gate of the kunja. Swamini suddenly sees him standing there and stops playing the Veena. Mohana says, Can't I see even a little of how you are teaching Tulasi how to play the Veena? So Swamini orders Tulasi to play. Shrimati is very happy to see Mohana and to please him through her maidservant. servant. 
one of the 108 names Shri Padadasa Goswami gives to Shri Mati is she who is very happy with her friends to touch Upendra's lotus feet. But when she attained Krishna's lotus feet with her kingaris, her joy is even more spontaneous. How happy Swamini is to serve Mohana through her maidservant. I repeat, one of the 108 names Sri Padasa Goswami gives to Sri Mati is she who is very happy with her friend to touch Upendra's lotus feet. But when she attains Krishna's lotus feet, with her kinkaris, her joy is even more spontaneous. Radhe, this is two bhavas. When Radhika is with her sakis, girlfriends, and when they all together are in association with Mohan, she is very happy because he is happy to see them all. But when Radhika attains Krishna's Mohan's lotus feet with her kinkaris, her joy is even more spontaneous more intense. So it brings two sights, two impressions. When Radhika is together with Sakis in Radha Kunda, in Rasamandal, in Yamuna, all together are enjoying these pastimes. But when Radhika is with Kinkaris, her pastimes are more intense because the place where these pastimes are going on is very hidden place. In the cave of Govardhan, in Nivriti Nikunja, intimate room where only Radha and Krishna are together. So this is the natural completely for Radhika to feel such a spontaneous, intense love and pleasure when she is with King Karis. And we can see here the difference between Saki Bhav and Manjari Bhav. And we can also conclude that Manjari Bhav, on transcendental level, is highest Bhava, which brings Radhika in the position of most ecstasy, and also Mohan. Kuranga Sundarji? Yes. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Bhaya. May I see you? Uh, I'm here actually. I don't know if you, I'm done behind Gopika, all this shadow of Gopika. Um, I was just listening what you were saying, and it was similar feeling came to me. And uh, I'm happy that you shared it now. The that why Radhika is bringing Tulsi to the cave, right? Because in the cave, the most intimate pastimes will take place. So this is a very loving Leela when Radhika secretly takes Tulsi out from all the other Sakis and Manjus and brings her 
to the cave to teach her this song. So when Radhika goes to the cave, then already the Manjari knows what will happen next, that it's inevitable that Mohan will appear. So Tulsi in this moment is very fortunate, right? That she gets this special service to serve the divine couple alone in that cave. And not even that, she's also so expert that in one go she learns the song Radhika wants her to sing. Mm -hmm. Radhika wants, teaches her the song on the Veena, which she knows will be used then when Mohan will come. And I also once listened a very beautiful sequence of this Leela that when Mohan gets to know that Radharani is in a cave alone with the Manjari, of course, his heart gets so agitated and he rushes to that cave. And when he sees Tulsi playing, he asks Swamini, why you're not teaching me? I also want to learn. I also want to be your shisha. And then Radharani says to him, but you will never learn this. You're not capable of this, right? Then he says, okay, then show me what you have taught your uh, maidservant. And then Radharani asks Tulsi to play. And that creates so much amorous feelings in both of them. And Tulsi is very shy, actually. No? Manjuri is also shy in that moment. But whatever Swamini instructs her, she has to do. So similarly, we also have to adopt that quality in our life that whatever we listen from our Gurudev, our Guru Manjur, we have to immediately do it, you know, because we never know when this service is going to be needed. So I just felt like when you said, Guranga Sundar, that uh, when Swamini goes to the cave, everyone, the Manjuri already knows what will happen there and is already inside excited and happy and prepared to serve them. Even Mohan and Radharani might not know, but when the cave appears, the Manjuri knows what will happen. So thank you, Goranga Sundar and also Rasamai for so beautifully uh, reading us into the Leela. In the cave, all answers are there. But we should come in the cave with our deep heart and all existence. <laughs> Radhe. <laughs> if it on, you have to start one sangha, one hour every day. Yes. <laughs> We all want to listen to you every day. Hmm. Ram, Ram. Yeah. Thank you, Janadu Maharaj. Thank you very much. Udavaji, Gopika, Mira. Yeah. Thank you. Rasamari. Awesome. Thank you very much. Dani Diji, also for your sharing and questions. Questions are so important. Radhiram, thank you very much. And I'm sorry for any mistake which we did. Guru Devis. All is depend in our uh, type of Radha Das. How much we can be there and to think for that. That is our best. Another time is also.